Hello and welcome to this short discussion on qualitative versus quantitative um, data collection methods. Um, these really are two concepts related to qualitative versus quantitative research methods. And so specifically we're thinking about data collection methods, but we have to think about them in the general context of the research that's happening. So before I get started, I want to review something that I think a lot of you have heard me talk about. If you think about the research process, a lot of times that includes five different domains. First of all, we start off thinking about evidence-based public health or um, having this organized effort of improving health for the community based on some kind of evidence. We say, okay, well I have this question. I would like to be able to do such and such or I, I wonder about the relationship here between these variables. And that is your question. You're wondering, is this supported by evidence? Is this evidence-based? Can I make some kind of a conclusion if I were to have that evidence and summarize it in such a way that I can answer the question that I have? And so once we ask the question, then a lot of times we'll design a, some kind of a study. Maybe it's just collecting data that already exists, going and looking at um, charts or um, lab reports that have historically um, already been collected. Or maybe that means that we're going to design a study where we have to go and collect the data. But in either case, we design all the components of the study. Who are we going to have be our subjects? What kind of design are we going to use? And so um, those, those specifics about how it is that we're going to answer that question are in the study design. Then we set out to go and collect data and compile it into one place, often some kind of a um, data set, a spreadsheet, some kind of computer program where all of that data is in one place and we can compare it for each person and different groups and that kind of thing. Then we move on to actually analyzing the data. And this is a big part of where biostatistics lives, is we have to know what kinds of data analysis we can use. We have to um, look at different descriptive or um, inferential statistics. And so analyzing the data means that we are organizing it and we're, we're allowing ourselves to draw conclusions about what we see in the data. And then taking that information and reporting it includes all the things that have to do with packaging it in such a way that makes it useful to another person. And so a lot of times we'll take things and we'll put them into graphs. We will summarize the statistics and give it a p-value so that people can kind of systematically understand exactly what it is that we found. And so this research process um, and then the reporting of the results often, not surprisingly, actually spawns new questions and so then we ask a new question we design a new study and we collect more data and we analyze it now the research process does not always flow just completely smoothly from one thing to the next. A lot of times we'll collect data or we'll start collecting data and that will make us realize that maybe we need to rethink something about our study design or the data that we start collecting really says wow we have we thought we had a question, but the kind of data that we're finding really aren't answering that. Once we have the data collected and we start analyzing it, maybe that means we have to go back and look at it and clean it up a little bit, maybe um, keep collecting data. We analyze a little bit of data, sort of a pilot study, and then we realize we need more. Uh, and so this is a very much an iterative process where we it's not just uh, flowing directly. If anybody's worked on research, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so it, it kind of um, keeps, we keep improving the process as we go. And so just understanding that it's a messy process and that's okay. Um, being part of any kind of research project will teach you patience and many other good qualities.
So um, let me talk a little bit about this whole difference between qualitative and quantitative research methods. Now this little tiny introduction is just a tiny little piece. You can take entire classes on qualitative research methods. You can probably get a PhD in qualitative research methods. And the same thing for quantitative. Um, I would say as kind of an overview of these two research methods that um, qualitative research methods tend to be more open-ended and quantitative um, research methods tend not to be as open-ended. And that's probably not the only kind of bird's eye view difference that some people would say, well, quantitative can be open-ended. I would say it, it tends not to be. And so let me explain, and this really goes back to the whole idea of the data collection methods that we use. In qualitative research methods, the data collection that we use um, kind of fall into a couple of areas. Um, qualitative research methods use a couple of key um, key data collection methods. Um, one of them is called a key informant interview. And one of them is called a focus group. A key informant interview is where we sit generally with one person and a focus group is where we collect a, a larger group um, of people, uh, generally several people, who are all related to a specific kind of topic and we um, we ask these people questions that we do not have a set um, list of possible answers to those questions. And so that's where I'm thinking about this whole concept of being open-ended. Um, we, we ask questions about um, what, what do you think is the most important issue in your community? And we could come up, we could come up with a list. We could make a survey question and we could say, well, is it environmental or is it social dynamics or is it um, we, we could come up with our list of what we think are common issues for a community, but for that specific community as a whole, as a group, they may have this realization that there is this really burning problem in their community. And if we tried to package it in a pre-made list of answers, we might completely miss what's happening in that particular community. So qualitative research methods, um, it's not that we don't have a set of questions. We often have, a, a, have some very specific questions that we're thinking of. But when we ask those questions, we're allowing ourselves to kind of go um, down the rabbit hole, so to speak. We're, we're allowing ourselves to follow wherever that conversation leads. And somebody might say, you know, the, the biggest issue for our community has to do with um, something that most people maybe wouldn't even think of. So, and then we can ask more about that specific thing because we're allowing ourselves to kind of just follow where that conversation goes. It's not that it's not structured. It's not that we don't have um, a specific idea of, of what we're looking for, but we, we have those questions that allow us to follow um, what uh, where that wherever that conversation might lead. I think a lot of people with qualitative research methods would say this is hypothesis generating. Um, and there are quant quantitative research methods that are also hypothesis generating. But in qualitative research methods, I think the vast majority of the time, we're trying to find out what our hypothesis even is. And so um, using these particular methods, data collection methods, then um, we can 
gather that data and start to see trends in the kinds of answers that we get um, from people. So we may do a whole bunch of key informant interviews, and we may have a couple or three focus groups, um, just to kind of find out what is, what is the information that we're after. Quantitative research methods, on the other hand, I said, is not so open-ended. Um, and here, we may be thinking about surveys or questionnaires. Um, if any of you have taken a survey, often um, the survey has a variety of different questions, similar to qualitative research methods, but each question has only a certain number of possible answers that, that you're able to give. So for example, race ethnicity, um, we have come up with specific categories um, that are standardized across um, any survey that, that you may be looking at, and those are the possible choices. And it's based on um, family of origin. It's based on um, Hispanic versus non-Hispanic. So those kinds of concepts are already predetermined about what possible choices you can make. Even if it is a continuous variable, such as what is your age or what is your birthday, um, there, there's a specific way that you answer that question. Height and weight, blood cholesterol, um, and so um, we can get information from surveys or questionnaires. We can get information from lab reports, um, uh, chart reviews. The, the information is, has, has a certain possible answer choices. And outside of that, we, we've kind of already predetermined what the possible outcomes are of asking any one of those particular questions. And so that's where I'm saying it's not really um, as open-ended. We can't say, well, based on that answer that you gave, let's ask these other questions that I didn't even think of before I um, started this process. So quantitative research methods can either be hypothesis generating or they can be hypothesis testing. And I think most people think of the hypothesis testing when they're thinking about um, the kinds of things that we do in public health. So for example, um, if we have a specific um, outbreak that's happening, we want to know what caused it. Maybe it was a foodborne illness and we need to see, you know, what food was it? Was it um, some kind of fruit or vegetable or was it dairy or meat? Um, where, where did this come from? So that as we're making this organized effort to improve the health on the community level, how can we, how can we intervene in however it is that that happened, all the multiple steps from food production to transportation to preparation to serving it, um, how can we change what's going on so that that kind of thing doesn't happen again? And so we're testing a lot of hypotheses, what caused it, um, who's impacted, that kind of thing. And so in that case, we're, we're doing a lot more on the, on the hypothesis testing. We, we want to ask a question and then be able to come up with data that answers that question. So um, both of these, I want to stress, both of these can be very rigorous. It's not that one is soft and one is more concrete. Um, they, the, the, re the qualitative research methods and the data collection methods that go along with it can be very concrete. They both follow this same process where you ask a question, you design the study, you collect good data, you analyze it. With qualitative research methods, we're looking for trends in the kinds of answers. Um, with quantitative, we look at things like um, t-tests and um, means and standard deviations and those kinds of things. And then when we take those results and we look at them, a lot of times that generates new questions. And sometimes we move back and forth between qualitative or quantitative. Sometimes for a particular project, there are certain parts of it that lend themselves to qualitative and other parts that lend themselves to quantitative. And so you can uh, you can incorporate both of these, and it's a very good idea to have a handle on how how both of these can can really supply that um, evidence, so that we can have this organized public health health um, effort 
to improve uh, population's health. Thank you for joining me.